Creation Detectives. Episode 1, The Flooded Desert. A guided view adventure. Our detectives begin their adventure at the Grand Canyon. Uh, come on, Poirot, you love rocks. Peter, mon ami, this is not a rock, this is glass, and glass breaks easily. Isn't it great that because of Peter's good grades, his dad decided to send us all to the Grand Canyon? We're lucky Peter worked hard to get good grades, and that his dad is so generous. Let's make the most of it. Although the drainage basin of the Colorado River was formed about 40 million years ago, the Grand Canyon is actually a lot younger. It is calculated that it is less than 6 million years old, and that most of the erosive process is from the last 2 million years. Why do these people keep talking about millions of years? They may look old, but none of them were around millions of years ago to see what actually happened. Excuse me, miss. Are you going to explain the alternative theory that the Grand Canyon was formed during a great catastrophe? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. Are you referring to the biblical flood? Yes. I'm a pastor, In and... In the past, the people believed that geological layers and fossils were the result of a flood that God sent to Earth. But today, science has demonstrated that the spectacular geological formations from the Grand Canyon are the result of natural processes. I'm also an archaeologist. This is a scientific visit. We don't have time to explain myths and legends. If you would follow me. Pastor Max, we go to church, and we believe in the Bible. Do you think the Grand Canyon was actually formed during the flood? The flood that the Bible describes was much more than 40 days of simple rain. It was more like four or five disaster movies happening all at once. Tropical storms, tsunamis, volcanoes, earthquakes, and probably even meteorites falling and hitting the earth. Thousands of tons of material and debris moving from one place to another, gigantic currents depositing the layers and then eroding them. And these processes continued for a long time, even after the rain had stopped, completely changing the appearance of the planet. Look at those layers. Did you know that some of them extend laterally for thousands of square kilometers? There is no natural process that exists today that could deposit such enormous layers, not even the Amazon River, which is the largest river in the world. Wow, how do you know so much about this? In my career as an archeologist, I found lots of evidence predicted by the Bible's historical record. After retiring, I studied geology and paleontology because I'm convinced these sciences should also yield theories consistent with what the Bible reveals. This tan-colored layer is the Coconino sandstone. It formed from windblown desert sand that was slowly buried and compacted before being cemented into solid rock. These are the remains of ancient desert dunes that once occupied this place. Are you sure that this layer was a desert? Absolutely. The geologist Edwin McKee demonstrated in his 1933 monograph on the Coconino sandstone that it is of desert origin. The kids ask Max why that is a problem. If the Grand Canyon's layers were formed during the biblical flood, the Bible tells us the land was completely covered by water. How could there have been a desert to form the Coconino sandstone? There are dunes under the ocean also. Maybe the scientists have made a mistake. Someone should re-examine the evidence. Maybe it is actually consistent with the flood. We could do it. What a great idea, James. I'm in. What do you say, Pastor? We can't do it without you. I, you could count on me. Well, I'm gonna have to find a good souvenir from here.
we should start by looking for information about the Coconino sandstone and about the different characteristics of dunes that have been deposited by wind in the desert versus dunes that have been deposited underwater. I completely agree. Let's get started. It would be better if we work in pairs. Diana and me. And Peter and I will be team two. Quaro, you stay here, okay? Books? I've always thought that they're overrated. Dunes that have been formed by wind are very similar to those that form underwater. But there are a few differences. Windblown sand grains from desert dunes are usually rounded in the same size. Processes that make desert dunes usually make high angles, um, about 30 degrees. Underwater processes commonly make layers at lower angles. We found a book in multiple articles about the Coconino sandstone by that McKee guy. All of them say that the Coconino sandstone is composed of fine, rounded, and well-sorted grains of quartz. We also found locations where the Coconino sandstone is most accessible for study. Ash Fork, Seligman, and Holbrook, in other parts of Arizona, and the Hermit Trail in the Grand Canyon. We could start our field research at the Hermit Trail. Let's make a list of the things we'll need. It's a good thing that your dad's friend got this van for us. I can't believe how much stuff we've got. Are you serious? You bought a microscope with your dad's card? Yeah, it's for a good cause. I bought magnifying glasses also, just in case. I want a rich dad too. Carefully, he'll deduct all this from your inheritance. I'm not sure these sand grains are well sorted. Definitely, the grains vary in size and they are angled, not rounded. See how it was a good idea to bring a microscope after all? I think someone is coming. 24 degrees, 18 degrees, 20 degrees, 24, 15, 25 degrees, 11 degrees, 19, 24, 22 degrees. Hmm. The average would be 20.2 degrees. The wind or water push the grains of sand around the dune until they fall to the other side, forming these angled layers. But why are there so many layers, one on top of the other? I have no idea. It's not normal. It's almost as if there were a bunch of dunes piled on top of each other. It's Max. He says he's almost here. Hey, there he is. It's getting late, and the sun is going down. We should set up camp. I miss my bed. Ow! There's a rock poking my tailbone. Be quiet and go to sleep, Peter. Good night, guys. What is that smell? You didn't bring your boots in the tent, did you? Uh, yeah. What, do you want bugs to get in them or something? So, what do we have so far? Under the microscope, the grains don't look round, and they're not at all the same size. And the average angle of the layers is well below 30 degrees. It's so obvious. This wasn't a desert. It was an ocean. I'm not sure that this evidence will be enough. Poirot, what is it? Did you find the only lizard of the desert? And footprints! But these footprints, they're part of the rock! Pastor Max, James, Diana, come look at this! Fossil footprints! Very good, Peter. Way to go! I'm the one who actually found them. These footprints could really help. What if they're from a marine animal? That would solve the problem. 
Maybe we should consult a zoologist. I know a scientist who studies Grand Canyon fauna. Take a few more pictures while I try to contact her. Of course. I'll be waiting for you in my office after lunch. We'll go back to the city and meet up with my zoologist friend there. Great. Time to clean up. This sure beats the library. Dogs are welcome here. Welcome. What do you have to show me? I'm pretty sure that the footprints are from a small land vertebrate, probably a lizard or an amphibian, but it's hard to know exactly. Amphibians? Aren't those frogs and toads? They don't look like frog footprints to me. There are other kinds of amphibians like salamanders that don't jump, and they have four legs similar to those of lizards. If salamanders are amphibians, then they can walk on both land and underwater, right? That's right. Maybe we could use salamanders to investigate whether the footprints were made in the desert or underwater. That's not a bad idea. You can use my lab for the experiments. Remember, though, that when you use live animals, it's very important that you treat them well and in compliance with animal welfare laws. I'll help you. We'll put the salamanders into terrariums. And we'll take pictures of the footprints that they leave in each one. Footprints? I can do footprints. Poirot, what are you doing? Watch out. The fossil footprints look much more like the footprints left by the salamander underwater than on dry sand. But what if it was simply wet sand from the rain? Am I the only one that thinks there's something weird about the direction of these footprints? The direction of the footprints doesn't match the position of the toes. It looks like the animal tried to walk straight, but something forced it to move sideways. How can that be? Water currents! There was probably some kind of current that pulled the animal sideways. Let's investigate it. Poirot also wants to check what happens when you try to walk forward, but something drags you sideways and... Salamander walking in a current, test one. The footprint pattern looks like the fossil footprints. You guys have made two very important discoveries. You should present them at a scientific conference. I'm not sure what was discovered, but I found the footprints in the first place. nervous. You guys are going to do great. Speak slowly, just like we rehearsed. Guys, it's your turn. As you have seen, both our in situ observation and results of our lab experiments suggest that fossil footprints found in the Coconino sandstone were made by a vertebrate organism walking in moving water. These conclusions call into question the commonly accepted hypothesis that the Coconino sandstone is a desert deposit. They instead favor the reinterpretation of the Coconino sandstone as ancient underwater dunes that have been cemented into sandstone. How is it possible that the desert theory has been accepted for so long when anyone could have found these data? Why didn't I think of this? Everyone knows the Coconino sandstone has always... That has to be wrong. How dare these upstarts challenge the I experts? I think this research has been manipulated. I would like to know what your real objective is. Here we go again with, with the biblical flood story. I didn't come to a scientific conference to These kids are really intelligent and brave. I should defend them, but... 
I'm afraid that I could lose my job. Man, I thought the evidence would convince scientists that our theory is sound and the biblical record of a global flood is reliable. It's just as difficult for scientists to change their thinking as anyone else. For the majority of the scientific community to change their mind, a scientific revolution is necessary. And these are always long and messy. Hi, we're Dionisio and Damaris. It's nice to meet you. We are Greek paleontologists. We were impressed with your presentation. It made us rethink our own interpretations. We are working on some intriguing human footprints that shouldn't be where we find them. Maybe there's a better explanation if we can take into account the biblical record of history. Fantastic. We should keep investigating and looking for more evidence that helps us understand the world in light of what the Bible reveals. We could make a club. <coughs> yeah, we can call ourselves the Creation Detectives. <coughs> See you in the next case. If you like this story and want to read it by yourself, you can download the comic book Creation Detectives 1, The Flooded Desert, in multiple languages at grisda.org slash creationdetectivesfloodeddesert. Find more information on the Coconino Sandstone, other exciting research projects, and valuable help to deal with the apparent conflicts between science and the Bible at grisda.org. The characters in this comic book are fictional, but real scientific research has been done on the Coconino Sandstone. The data discussed, along with much more, were discovered in this research. Several scientists participated in the investigation, but the main players were professors Leonard Brand and John Whitmore. Creation Detectives The Flooded Desert was based on research by scientists Leonard Brand and John Whitmore. Original idea and argument by Noemi Duran and Manuel Quintanilla. Adapted script by Fali Ruiz Davila. Editing by Timothy Standish. Translated by Lisa Decker. Design and technical realization by Alejandro Torquemada, Eva Ara, Pedro Agueri, and Roberto Balestero. Animated Get A View was executive produced by Steve Phillips, directed and post-produced by Douglas Bruce, with original music by Danny Columbi.